Hi, everyone. Welcome to Build Series. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, from In The Know. And today, we have four very special guests with us from a little show you may have heard of, Pop TV's hit, Schitt's Creek. Uh, over the past five seasons, we followed the Rose family's journey from fish out of water in a small town, eager to get back to their glamorous lives, to embracing their surroundings while finding happiness, love, humor, and fun along the way. Here to talk about the sixth and final season of Schitt's Creek, please welcome Dan Levy, Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, and Annie Murphy. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You guys, I'm very excited to have you guys here, but also I'm a little bit devastated because it means we're at the end. What does it feel like to be to have the end in sight? Technically, we're at the beginning of the end. <laughs> Thank you. We're Thank like you. two steps into the beginning of the end. It's very optimistic. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a whole season left. We could be here next year. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Talking about that season. There we go. You just watched. <laughs> um, so before we get too far into it, something major happened on Sunday night at the Critics' Choice Awards. Mm -hmm. You guys met the Nicole Kidman. Oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> she's a fan of the show. She tagged you guys on Instagram. It looked like you had a great little moment with her. What was that like? That what was the most composed we looked the entire evening. <laughs> and we looked All the, Literally every other photo taken in this series, we looked completely whacked out. <laughs> um, it's funny, because I don't think we, we really thought we'd be talking about this as much. But um, yeah, we were all like, little adoption puppies. She sort of looked over and we were like, and like but me, but what about us? She first she loved Catherine the most. She, yeah, she, she would did. have adopted Catherine. Who would have? Sure. She saw me first. <laughs> then, then I You're being humble. The others and, but really, she's going to get a restraining order now. It's true. <laughs> so we won't be allowed to talk about her, let alone see her. But, but that, really, gets into some, that gets into something that has been really special because uh, Schitt's Creek has been kind of a slow burn, and it's, it's, it's gotten to this point where, I mean, look at the studio right now. It's packed to the brim. It's, it's so popular, <laughs> but over, over the years, you've gotten more and more celebrity interests as well. We have Mariah Carey's on the list. Um, Ariana Grande's a fan. Nicole Kidman's a fan. Who's been the most surreal fan of, of, of Schitt's Creek that you've heard about that's into the show? Carol <laughs> Burnett, for me, was pretty, oh, that's a good one. pretty big and exciting. Tony Hale. Angelica Houston. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, only it's, because I thought, you know, why would she be watching the show? We never. Does she? That's a, that's a good does she watch still don't comedy? Think people watch I the don't. Shows. This I, is just one big. Yeah. Tom Ford loves our wardrobe. There we go. Oh, there the we highest go. compliment cool. I could ever receive. <laughs> um, okay, so we're at the final season. We're at the sixth season of, of Schitt's Creek. Um, we left off with um, Patrick and and David are engaged. Uh, Alexis is going to the Galapagos. Moira's having potentially some sort of meltdown over the movie getting shelved. Mm. And Johnny, and Johnny, I think, is just trying to keep it all together, keep the motel running, keep the family together. Classic. What, where can we expect this last season to go? Because um, it's a big one. Oh. Get away, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I think the, the second season, which just which aired on Tuesday, I believe. Episode. Uh, second episode. Second season. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's 3 p.m. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think the second episode is a, is a great sort of indication of where we're going to go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we realized that I accidentally wet the bed. We ha I mean, uh, <laughs> which Lots was an of bodily fluids this in <laughs> interesting uh, story to pitch to the room. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we pulled it off. But, you know, I think just continuing to peel back the layers, continuing to explore the minutia of day to day life and also to con continue to sort of kick dust up in the air with these people and see where it lands. I think ultimately we're, we're leading towards something. We're leading mm -hmm. toward a conclusion. So I think in the process, we're trying our best to carefully and thoughtfully and slowly tie up all loose ends and, um, and make sure that our characters are, are properly taken care of by the end of the show. So, you know, I would expect to see more of the same, to be perfectly honest, because I didn't want this last season to feel anything but exactly what we've come to expect from the show. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think there'd be no complaints about that. I, I, you know, I think that, that that's, <laughs> we're all, we want kind of it, it to hit the, the heartstrings as it has. We want to laugh at this last season. And um, I know you have said before that you knew for a while where it was gonna kind of ultimately tie up. Mm. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? And just Absolutely sort of not. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we had an idea as to 
I, I've always had an idea about how it would end. I think when we got our last two seasons, uh, we I knew then that we had 28 episodes to wrap it up. And, um, you know, from there on in, it was about sort of laying the groundwork for the end. I never wanted to get to a situation, which I, I think sometimes happens, where you're like two episodes before the series has ended, and suddenly we're wrapping up a thousand storylines, and suddenly things are coming out of left field, and it, it feels overwhelming. I wanted it to be a slow burn in the same way that I think the show and the character revelations and the stories have been a slow burn. Um, I didn't want to just suddenly panic and have the show end. I wanted it to feel like this was all leading towards something very lovely and... Mm -hmm. um, and it real. Is, it is lovely. And there are also laughs right to the end. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, Catherine, I mean, we have a legend in our midst today. I'm, I'm so excited to have you specifically here. Catherine O'Hara, I mean, you've been a part of some of my favorite, Best in Shows, one of my favorite movies. Best in Shows, one of my favorite movies, Eugene. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eugene's in that, too. <laughs> I know. But, but Eugene gave me that job, thanks. Eugene and Chris Guest hired me yeah, for those movies. And, yeah. So thank but you, Eugene. And then another job with Schitt's Creek. So yes. I owe Eugene my life. Not what I call a <laughs> tough casting choice. <laughs> I do want to get a little bit into Moira, though, because to me, it is work that only you can do. It is, it is, there's something about Moira that is just so special and so unique. And I would just, I'm just curious if you kind of look back to the beginning when you first uh, kind of signed on with, with Dan and Eugene. How much a part of kind of the crafting of, of, of Mora were you, um, the accent, the wigs, like what, what kind of talk to me about just like cultivating that unique character? Well, Eugene and I have been laughing recently about our uh, early emails, you know, when I signed on and then, uh, you know, he'd say, OK, this is going to happen and we'll, you know, we, we I mean, he sort of gave me a broad stroke idea of we are moved. You know, our lives are upheaved, and we're moved to this town, and then, and then uh, everything's going to be okay. Kind of, you know, as Johnny, wait, uh, these I keep saying, but these emails that we exchanged, you could see where we're slowly turning into Johnny and Moira. Because I'm saying, <laughs> Eugene, you have to make me feel. I mean, Moira's getting her. This is the like the worst thing. You, I can't just like accept it. Okay, it's gonna. It has <laughs> to be. You know, and he's saying, and then and Eugene is writing. He's such a gentleman. He's writing about everything's going to be taken care of. Where, you know, you say you want to do a particular kind of voice when you get here, we'll hear it, and then we'll write for that, and it's going to be good. No, but you must allow me. You know, so I was like, <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because we, we did kind of a presentation uh, pilot on, uh, on the show in the very beginning, and, um, and I know Catherine was, uh, was kind of reluctant to... Uh, to do it because you know you when you do a pilot you 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 normally sign on you have to sign on for a you know multi year kind of thing and she really wasn't prepared to commit to a series but when we finally said uh, you know you just you can just do the presentation pilot and there's no commitment you can leave if you want to leave after it but just help us out and you can do it. and she said fine but the character of Moira was far different than what it turned out to be it it was a soap uh, a soap uh, ex soap, soap star yeah. and kind of socialite and 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 putting on uh, to contributing to charity events but but along those lines and you were very gracious and you did it the way it it was written then but when we finally got to do the series she had some great suggestions it's, for the character it's so uh, lovely for me that anyone cares about this character or thinks Moira was funny. <laughs> Honestly, because right at the beginning, it's all just, how long are we signing on for? How long are we going to be able to do this? And 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 you want to come up with a character that you want to live with. Little, you don't even think about the audience. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, who could I stand to be doing? You know, how could I stand? I didn't want to. You know, I didn't want to be an angry wife and just harping on my husband about what he what he had happened to us. No. Um, so you're just trying to come up with things to keep yourself mm -hmm. interested, and it's such a lovely... I mean, everything about this show is such a mm -hmm. joyous kind of thing, ultimately. Yeah, the dialect and the, and the wigs and the, all those things were <laughs> what you brought. But, and I think that gets into something that's really been special to watch, is that these characters start off about not wanting to be there at all. They want to get out of there right away, but they've also slowly let their lives be meshed in with, the, with, with Schitt's Creek. And um, is that something that was, was a conscious thing for you, for you, Dan, just sort of to kind of get these characters slowly enmeshed into this town and it, it but it yeah, is I mean I think the co the general concept of the show the guidelines we were working in was just exploring the scenario of 
a family that has been used to money and what money brings and how it fixes problems and how you can express love via gifts and wealth, um, what love looks like when you take it away. So I think inherently the structure of that idea lent itself to the continual mm -hmm. sort of removal of you know, people's guards and, and exposing truths to these characters that they didn't even know about themselves. So the structure was built in from season one and you can see it because there was a reason why the first season was living in a, where, in, a, in a place that was much sort of, much more on the surface than where we ended up say at the end of season three or four or five. You had to earn those moments. You had to earn that kind of sentimentality. Um, and you, for us, the first season was about laying the groundwork with this family so that we could show, if we were given the runway, just how far they can grow. Um, yeah, in the beginning, it really was the fish out of water scenario of this wealthy family now living in a motel in a in a small town with no money. Mm -hmm. And it it took the first season, as you said, to get that to get that done. Once that was once that was done, then then focus on character and relationships and this family starting to realize what it's like to and how to become a family uh, took took precedent. Mm -hmm. I remember defending us after the first episode or two. And they were saying, guys, I mean, these characters are kind of a-holes. <laughs> Excuse me, how are you seeing them at their best? How would you behave if your life was just ripped out from under totally. you? What would you be like? Mm -hmm. let, let them live a little bit. Let, the, let them accept yeah, their situation. Yeah, they're a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. Right. you didn't seriously. have to present... <clears throat> Uh, what we were going to become mm -hmm. in that no, first and I think episode. A lot of that was we, we approached the sh we have always approached the show like a drama. Mm. Every storyline, it's about the dramatic elements of what we need to say and what we need to do in the show. The humor really comes from the characters and the interactions and the circumstances. But the storylines and the inherent sort of overarching story of this family is dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, and I think staying true to that allowed for a level of... Uh, allowed for a foundation of truth to exist in the show, and that just made all the comedy that much more fun mm -hmm. because it it felt earned and it felt sort of. And I feel like we see that a lot in Alexis. I think that 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 Alexis has perhaps shown the most growth throughout this whole show. She's really grown up. Um, I went to your guys's uh, panel at at Beacon Theater last, last year. And, and I remember, Annie, you said specifically that you kind of studied photos of Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton, how they hold their handbags like this or like this. And that's sort of how you kind of got her physicality down. Talk to me about stepping into Alexis's shoes and how that has changed for you over the years. Um, well, as you said, I did, it wasn't photos, it was more oh, clips. Got it. <laughs> Short clips, because I couldn't do whole episodes. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I I I watched I watched those those ladies do their thing, and I took you know their their uh, dulcet like vocal fry, um, which was is just so fun and easy to do. It's the laziest thing in the world. <laughs> um, and then yeah, the handbag thing. And I was late one night. I was like, what if there was no handbag, and I just flipped my wrist over and then <laughs> like added another. <laughs> ended up with that situation um but yeah I think like when we started out Alexis on paper was such a handful and such a an unpleasant character mm -hmm. um but it was really important to me you know everyone is a multi-layered person and you're a different person with everyone you're with and you know people bring out different aspects of your personality. And so it was really important to me to play Alexis as a fully fleshed out human. Mm -hmm. And that was also part of the casting process too, because we were, we needed that. We right. didn't want it to be an, a stereotype. And super, I think super, what super Annie stuff. inherently brought to the, into the room when she auditioned was this like joyful likability and a warmth to the character that we didn't see from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Like it was just abundantly clear that she was the right person to play it because we didn't want the character to go down a path of, I've seen socialites played on TV all the time. It was about how do we expose this character for being more than what culture has sort of totally. pinned her to be. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think, I think it's um, a testament to the to, uh, nurture in the nature-nurture 
argument um, because Alexis started out in this environment that was so deeply superficial and there were so many relationships that weren't sincere at all that brought out you know many unlikable qualities in her Mm -hmm. but then you plunk her into this town and take away that toxic environment and you kind of let her real personality and show and you see yeah. that she's a slightly selfish person but also a <laughs> deeply selfless person and she has the best she has the best random stories with random oh god celebrities. what a life what I a mean, life the amount of people she's been linked to i just it's it's amazing uh, the parents know nothing about exactly <laughs> they, were, they were raised in captivity captivity of money mm-hmm. but not parented in any way. So they were fending for themselves. The world was literally their playground. Like yeah, she lived every, every country. <laughs> Turns out they're the sweetest kids mm-hmm. in the world. Exactly. Those stories were my favorite things to write. And that must be so fun. It's they like, were it's my like, it's, favorite, favorite, It must favorite. be like the Mad Libs. It's like, hey, let's take a male celebrity. Let's I take a random country. So much. Much. <laughs> I will miss those stories. I will, I'll just end up diarying them myself. <laughs> Doing what? Putting them in a diary. Okay. That's, diarying that's, them. <laughs> Diarying. Diarying. It's a word I just Got came it. up with. We love that. It's a verb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, just how far could we push her? Mm-hmm. Where could she go next? That was such a mm-hmm. thrill. Annie, there's somebody in this audience with an Ooh David hat on. Is like, it? Right, here oh, right in front, front of my row. eyeballs. Hi. Can, can we, for old time's sake, can we get an, a new David? For the... Ew, David. <laughs> That's all that we needed. That wasn't good enough. Wait. Everyone has to do it with me. Okay, ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Ew, David. Yeah. <laughs> thank well, you, thank welcome you. Welcome to what my life has become. <laughs> An unexpected treat for my day to day is just like walking down the street with my dog and having someone be like, ew. I'm like, you're like, I'm not David. Didn't think about this. And you don't know if they've seen the show or not. I don't. There's a strong chance they haven't. It's true. <laughs> um, something else I want to get into that I think is that I think has become the heart of the show is Patrick and David. Mm. Um, I mean, simply the best that the moment where he sings the the acoustic song was a huge breakout moment for the show overall. Um, You know, what about that relationship do you think really struck a chord with, Mm. I mean, honestly, it felt like everyone watching this show and and even beyond. Um, I think, I think it was, I think, I guess it was the fact that we didn't, approach that storyline any differently than you would a straight storyline. And I think as a gay person, I'm so used to seeing queer characters on television othered in some way, Mm -hmm. even if they're not intentionally. They're always sort of, the storylines are particularly love stories. It's almost as if you can almost see people being like, see, look what we're, Mm -hmm. isn't that? And, or, or some sort of, or anytime something good happens, someone dies. Totally. Um, so it was really my mandate to show as effortless a relationship or as casual a relationship as I could, a relationship that echoed my life, echoed my friends' lives, Mm -hmm. something that I wasn't seeing on TV. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think people responded to it. They responded to seeing themselves sort of through the characters and it's a happy ending. Yeah. And we don't get a lot of those mm-hmm. on TV. We don't. And I think a lot of little boys and girls watching that will feel very, watching just the show will feel very comfor- comforted by that. And I think another major moment that happened before the season was this billboard that went up. Um, we have it here. <laughs> and I mean, it's, it's just so special to see that. It gives you, it gives me, ch- I just got chills just when that popped onto the, onto the screen. Um, I guess for, honestly, for all, for all of you guys, what's it like being a part of a show that can have an impact Beyond just being an amazing, funny TV show, like this is a lot. Like this billboard being up in, I think Los Angeles, it's it's a it, it's 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 really special. I, I can't wait till it's not a big deal. Yeah, and and that it's just the way it is because it is the way it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it really is a testament to the show, and really, it comes down to a love story is a love story. It's Definitely. In, in, without you know, without, you know, waving any banners or, you know, making it political or making an issue out of it. Tell the story, which is And I think that's why I wanted this out Mm -hmm. there, because I think so much of it is just people are fearful of what they don't know. And the more you can put it out there in as broad stroke as this or as small as just a scene in our show, Mm -hmm. the more people become accustomed to what they see and they just... A lot of it is people don't know. Mm-hmm. 
And a lot of the letters we received from people who had, you know, treated their kids or their brothers or their sisters or their cousins badly because they happened to be gay or queer. um, And they found a point of entry in the show. They found a way to understand. Mm. And I think people just need points of entry to understand. I think that's all we need in terms of how we, you know, see each other. We just need to empathize a little more. Mm -hmm. So... This, I mean, the fact that it came in our last season, it was the greatest thing, f- I mean, for me on so many levels, but I think it's, it's the show in a nutshell. It's just unabashedly loving and joyful and unapologetic. Mm-hmm. And Eugene, before, before we cut to, to the audience, to me, it's, what, another thing that makes it very special is that it's inherently built on family. It's, this is a father-son effort. You and Catherine have a long working relationship or seem to be just like family. Annie, it seems like you've been welcomed in, into this family. With, my <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, that also feels like it sets it apart from, from kind of anything else out there. Has, have you ever felt this feeling on any project that you've worked on before? And just talk to me about the feeling that you get kind of being a part of this. Uh, no, 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 not, not remotely. I've been on projects that where you just have a great time and you're working with friends and, and it's just, you know, really terrific. But this... Uh, from the beginning, from the day uh, Daniel came to me and said, hey, do you want to work on something? I have an idea. Uh, You know, that was kind of a a life-altering moment for me because it had never happened before. And um, and, uh, so that was it. And just getting it off the ground and working together on it and watching uh, him absolutely... uh, blossom as a writer and a producer and an actor um, what has been <laughs> has been just absolutely you know amazing and of course the and 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 just the the cast uh, of course working with Catherine you know for, for so many years it's just been it's so comfortable it's so great it's it's and what I think the relationship Joni and Moira have, is is kind of just based on that comfort factor and how we kind of work the same way and we're just uh, we anticipate and and all that kind of comes through. But the cast is absolutely amazing and you know Annie comes you know uh, into this mix and and it must have been maybe a little intimidating uh, from an act <laughs> from an acting perspective for for you as well. But I mean it sure, was yeah. from day one. It was just like there it is. There's right. There's the family, and it was so natural. The cast is so brilliant that this character-driven comedy, which is what we set out to make, <clears throat> they they really took it over the top, this cast. They took what was given and then just, you know, brought it home. Um, so we have a Twitter question waiting for us over here. Um, Liz Hen, to, Liz Hen to me says, uh, what, <laughs> what has been everyone's favorite scene uh, throughout the show to, to film? Oh boy. Anne. Uh, don't ever call me that. You know that. <laughs> oh. That's why my dad used to yell when he was mad at me. <laughs> Anne. Um, don't. Uh, Daniel. Okay. Um, <laughs> Daniel Joseph. Yes. Um, I had such a good time. All of the scenes with the four of us, I love, love, love. Um, but then our, I think the cabaret day, um, where it was almost all the cast, we, it felt like we were actually doing a show Put because we were at this theater. There was an audience. We had a limited amount of time. We were all nervous and backstage and had butterflies and um, had to nail our lines and the choreography. And um, that was a really fun day for me. What about for you guys? For, uh, yeah, I, I would say family. I, I would say for me, it's the family scenes where the where the roses are interacting together. You know, arguing, fighting, you know, laughing, something. Um, those are the scenes that really hit home, you know, um, and there've been a lot of great scenes uh, that we've done on the show that I could name, but my all time faves are the scenes with the roses. I would agree. I think cabaret was a great time. Uh, especially, I mean, it was, I think it was the first, second episode I directed, co-directed with Andrew Savadino. Um, 
which was really fun because the scale of it was so big. We had <laughs> we managed to put a little bit of our money into the last episode and <laughs> make it look really special. Um, and that was, I mean, it's fun when you get to play and suddenly acting feels not just, it's exciting every day, but it feels sort of amplified. And then I think some, I guess some of my other favorite scenes would probably be some of the relationship stuff that I've uh, done with Noah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've managed to sort of slip into this groove with each other that's really natural. And I think for me, it, it's really meaningful to tell these stories and to get to write these stories, particularly the Meet the Parents episode where he was coming out of mm-hmm. the closet and the complication of all of that. So to get those, to not just write those scenes, but to then see them on their feet and then get to see people watch them and get to sort of see how we're shining a light out there. Mm -hmm. That's been quite meaningful as well. Kind of feel that extra importance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Catherine, what about for you? Family, definitely the Rose family scenes right Mm -hmm. from the, you know, the beginning (coughs) of starting this hellish life. And then, (laughs) (laughs) no, and then uh, trying to cook together, have a meal together in the motel. I think it's the one meal we had in the motel. David, help me with the door. (laughs) I'm drying my hair. Help me with the door. That gets air drying. Help me with the door. And and any time I got to perform as Moira Mm -hmm. or act or show what potential Moira has, Um, but especially when I would perform with David, because that just to look at his face, his tortured face, (laughs) tried to do his best, and the hair. It was written just as you, and then you were like, I think you should do it. And I was like, okay. (laughs) I love those people that make their, you know, especially wealthy showbiz people that make their kids do party pieces. You know, (laughs) you will do a number with me. It tracks, it tracks. He did it when he was a child, and then then he volunteered to do do it with me for Asbestos Mm -hmm. Fest. It was so so kind. It's true. (laughs) Um, Okay, we have four, uh, three audience Q&As. Right here. Hi, I just want to say thank you all for a fantastic six seasons of a show that has truly like changed my life. Um, and uh, Dan, I have a question for you. Um, you wrote David as pansexual because you hadn't seen that represented in, in other mainstream media before. And as a fellow queer actor who identifies as gay and trans, um, can we hope to see any other you know groups or minorities in any future projects? I mean, I ho- I think the great gift of this show is getting to write for the underdogs and to you know uh, in this particular case I was writing a lot from my own experience and my own sort of past and my own relationships failed and successful Um, yeah of course I mean I think the greatest feedback for me and the the greatest takeaway from this show has been what it's done for other people Mm -hmm. and how it's opened and inspired conversations in people's homes and promoted acceptance and joy and love and how if we just let each other be you will have joy around you all the time so yeah I mean I think it's it's crucial in whatever I do next that we continue to tell those stories and continue to promote that kind of philosophy because it's a dark dark world out there and it needs as much light as it can get Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you Another question? sweater, by the way. Great sweater. <laughs> Great sweater. I had the exact same one, but in wool, and we shot in the dead of summer. That sounds So fun. if you can imagine that sweater, and that looks like a cotton blend. It's a merino oh. wool. I see. Oh, the, do you, see so the you know what I'm feeling right now, except we're in wintertime. Wait, wait, show us the rings really quick. I you're accusing. Oh, you have the rings on as well. <laughs> I took all my rings home with me at the end of the <laughs> show. You've seen them. Okay. Okay. Uh, Next question. Okay. Hi. I just want to say, Dan, before I ask my question, uh, my claim to fame was that we were at the same Gaga concert last year. Oh, fantastic. So nice to be in the same room. Nice to see you again. Very nice to see you. Um, So (laughs) you have said that your favorite thing is that your dad hates his hair being wet. Mm -hmm. And then this season started with him being wet for almost no reason at all. And so I wanted to know what other tidbits from the actors on set did you kind of bring into their characters so that we saw on screen? I think that's a, I mean, everyone can answer that question. I will say... That was my dad's choice. <laughs> That's how far we've come. It's going long, this season, right? he was like, I think my hair should be wet. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, I think, and it, to, to your point, wetting Johnny's hair, showing the creek, even in those first two episodes, 
a lot of this season is a love letter to our fans. A lot of this season is little Easter eggs that we're going to be scattering throughout the next handful of episodes. So hopefully people will see things in there from a fan perspective that's like, oh, I see what they're doing here. I see where they're going. <laughs> um, but in terms of character details... Anybody Don't else? Make me. I go. use natural deodorant, okay? And sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> Oftentimes it do, it rarely works, and you're just rubbing a crystal under your arm. I don't <laughs> know exactly how it's supposed to work, but magic, natural <laughs> magic, aluminum-free magic. Um, anyway, he d this guy decided to write that into the show. So that's fun for me. <laughs> you fun must have details. had fun with that one. It's, uh, it's called authenticating the characters. There we go. <laughs> So your B.O. is in the show. My B.O. is proudly in the show. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, last question from the audience. Hi. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to say um, thank you to Dan and Eugene and all of you um, for telling the story of David and Patrick, which I think uh, really makes us all a little bit more brave, a little more loving, and a little more happily queer. Um, I'm very grateful. It's how I became friends with my current girlfriend. So like, whatever, I owe you my life. Um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever, I owe you my life. <laughs> um, so you've talked so much about the profound impact the show has had on LGBTQ fa fans and their families and everything. Um, and I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit more about what it's been like for you to write such a breathtaking story of um, LGBTQ love and um, we're so often denied that in fiction um, and what impact it's kind of had on your own life beyond just having nervous people come up to you saying, oh my God, you changed my life. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, you're given, very rarely are you given opportunities to, to write your story. And I think for me to have the, the soapbox, if you will, to tell this story without any reservation, without any pushback. Our networks were so supportive from day one. Knowing that we had that kind of freedom, it almost felt irresponsible not to tell this story as authentically as I possibly could. I think the moments that were the hardest for me to write were the moments that were the truest to my own experience. So whether it was the coming out episodes or the, you know, I, I've had have very supportive parents, but even the like, in the process of coming out, the fears of like, I know my parents are, good but will they is there in the back of your mind you're overthinking things writing those kinds of details in a way was sort of a catharsis for me because I was able to sort of analyze my own experience lay it on top of this character's experience who I mean fortunately for me I think I started in a better place <laughs> David's been knocked around a lot but even in terms of relationships, getting to write a successful relationship, getting to write a character for this, getting to write the character of Patrick, which I always saw as like something that I in my own life deserve, which is someone who is completely accepting of who you are. All of those things you tell yourself when you're going through a really bad relationship with someone, it's like, they only like me for this. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's always ups and up and down. I'm not feeling my, my whole self in this relationship. In a way, it's like it's gifted me this clarity of knowing that I deserve that and that everyone deserves that and hopefully has sort of paved a way for people to put themselves first and say, okay, this might be fiction, but I see something in this. I see the ability to be free and I see the ability to be what an authentic representation of yourself when in the face of someone else can result in, if that makes any sense. Um, I learned a lot from David. He he made me a stronger person, and a pro probably a slightly more judgmental person. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, on that note, thank you all for being here. Make sure to watch Schitt's Creek Tuesdays at 9 p.m. on Pop TV. Um, it's the sixth and final season, so definitely tune in. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys. Oh, thank you, thank you so much.